Time for this is the title will be, Can God Move? Can God Move? Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. Then I'm going to skip over to uh, uh, verse 40 and read the remainder of the chapter. He says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully cut, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then we'll skip over to verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that glad, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them, to all men, as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Now over the years, I've heard all kinds of excuses on why we don't see that kind of power in our churches today. Some will say, well, our culture is different. It's harder to reach people today than then. Then you have the other, you know, uh, uh, about, you know, they'll say, that, you know, it had to be this way because there was this, they had to have this powerful movement in order to get the early church jump started, you know, to get it, to get it going, uh, you know, to get people in. And, you know, so they come up, that, so it had to be that way just for that to happen in that day. And a lot of times, uh, people even use this, even use the Bible to try to defend uh, sometimes the lack of power that we see in our today. They'll, they'll use Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. They'll say, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And they'll say, well, you know, we get one saved? Praise God. Absolutely. Praise God. But I think somewhere along the line, we may have lowered our expectations of what God can do. And so the question is, could God still move like he did on the day of Pentecost? Has God changed? No. The Bible says he's the same. So what's changed in this, in this uh, formula? We have, okay? We're the ones that changed. And so, uh, you know, as we look at the scripture we have here tonight, what was going on when God moved? In verses 1 through 4, it said they were in one place. Now, I know there's this movement of foot, and I see it in the surveys they take it that says, you know, is church important to have a relationship with God? And we have a high percentage of folks that says, no, it's not. That the church is really not that important for my personal relationship with God. Well, that's problem number one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I had a fellow, well, <clears throat> he's family, but I was talking to him, and he's out of, ch out of church, and, and we, we were talking, and, uh, and he knows, you know, he knows, and and, uh, and he, he told me this. He says, I, I, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm just sort of fed up with church. <laughs> okay. He, he said, I really feel like I can have a close spiritual walk with the Lord without having to be in church. I said, well, you know the Bible. I said, do, do you believe that what the Bible says about God's no respecter of persons? Yeah, yeah, I believe that. I said, well, about everybody I talked to that says they're born again and love the Lord, including me. When I got saved over 40 years ago, I said, God put in my heart that I needed to be with a local body of believers. 
I had to be in charge. And I said, if you're telling me that you don't believe that way, and God hasn't worked on you that way, then you're telling me that, that, that he's a respecter of persons, and you've denied the Bible. So I said, you better figure out if you're going to believe God and his word, and if you're going to listen to fairy tales. <laughs> now, his main problem is he's just lazy. Okay? Now, you know, I, call, you know, I told him that too. He's family. I said, your problem, I said, part of your problem is spiritual, but the other part is you're just lazy. Because when Sunday morning comes around, you're laying in the bed. Yeah. You get there in the week and at work at 7, 7 a.m. On Sunday morning, you'll drag around the bed at 11 o'clock before you get up. You're just lazy. So don't blame this on the church. It's your problem. Yeah. All right? Well, you pray for him. But they were in one place. God had them gathered together. He had them, he had them bunched up there. And what happened? The next thing was, it says they were in one accord. Lord, we got to get together. You know, the enemy ain't us. <laughs> Sometimes I said, and I hear people talking, and we'll, they'll talk about their brothers and sisters in Christ. Bad. I mean, you know, and it's over things that it's not, you know, it's not even. It's not even the, the prime element of what we believe as believers. It's over peripheral stuff. I call it fluff. Okay? Oh, you know, I don't see it quite that way. Well, let me tell you something. I found very few people that I could see eye to eye on everything. And if you're honest, you're the same way. And if I allowed that to break my fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm wrong. And I'm not in one accord. How can God bless us when we're too busy tearing each other down? He <laughs> can't do it. Now, he had a bunch of men sitting there. Now. He had Peter, James, and John. And you read back in the Gospels, uh, they didn't get along all the time, did they? They didn't see eye to eye, did they? I mean, there's some points they disagreed on. And Jesus had to teach them and nurture them and and, and, but he got them all together. At that point in time, you know what they saw? They saw the big picture. They saw, and that's what we need today in Madison County. When all of us as God's children can begin to see the big picture. All right? It's not just about me. It's not just about where I'm at as a pastor. It's about God's kingdom. What's the big picture? How are we going to reach these 8,000 plus souls with the message of Jesus Christ? We've got to be in one place and one accord. Amen? They were focused on receiving the direction of the Holy Ghost in their life. I think we pray for that, but I don't know if we mean it or not. I share this, I've shared this with a number of our churches. As I've tried, my opportunity to share with churches is what I get here tonight. Now, I can't get y'all together at one time. <laughs> so I got to do these shotgun, you know, you know scatter gun. You know, I got to get around. So I preached this in a few other churches. I told them, I said, what would happen in our churches today, Gary, if we got down and got in the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, and all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, cloven tongues appeared as fire? It scares some of us today, <laughs> Oh boy, told me, he says, I hope I'd be caught up enough in the spirit not to be afraid. <laughs> you see, can God still move? You know, if we believe the word of God, that can, that can happen again. And now we try to we try to say, well, you know, they had to have it that way. That's just a one time. Did it say here this was a one time event? No. But what it did, it empowered them not to have a, a hoop down time. But what happened after the the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost fell upon them. They just shout around that little building there and just hoot and holler and have a good time. Now, I believe in shouting, all right? I grew up in a shouting church. No, they busted them doors open. No, Peter began to preach. You see, the power of the Holy Ghost is to compel us to get out in the world to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can have great services right here. You can't, and I hope you do. You can just rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. 
If you don't do anything of that, when you leave them doors, you don't take that with you when you go here, you don't share the message of Jesus, you ain't bother the devil one bit. You, hey, he expects you to have a great time here. But if you take that with you out there, that's going to bother him. But if you don't, he don't care. Well, they're doing exactly what I thought they'd do. They were trusting God to answer their prayers. They didn't know how he would work. They just knew he was going to work. We like to sit around and think this out, don't we? Now, God, yeah. how, how, how are you going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> like we really need to know. <laughs> well, you know, about this, don't you? Yeah. We've got to get a committee together to talk about it. <laughs> we better get a committee in on this. God, we know you're going to move, but we better get a committee. Yeah. God can't move without a committee. <laughs> I worked business for years. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, I, I worked at a corporate level. I worked. I worked with guys at the top. That was my role. I worked with the CEO and the VP. Senior, strategic planning was one of my fortes. And, and I sit on some of these. I read some of this stuff. And I get. And it's like we need to have strategic planning. You know, in the in the work. God expects us to plan. This ain't a haphazard thing. I'm going, why don't we just say the strategy is what God wants? <laughs> what, what, would it, what, what would happen if we all just got together and laid all this stuff aside and, and just say, Lord, I'm going to get out and I'm going to pray until you show me what you want done. And you know what? I believe God will do it if I'm willing. And God, I'll let you work that strategy, okay? Let me be the one doing it. <laughs> I'll let you do the planning. I mean, we need to do it. We need to plan. I'm a planner. We just need to let God help us. Let him lead. They went out. He didn't went out. I didn't say that. He went out. And he, uh, 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 he didn't wait for the world to come to them. But bless God, they know where the church is at. Let them come. Yeah. Well, where are they at? <laughs> I went, first went to Long Branch. That's where all the new roads got in here. We had a dirt road went down in front of the church. If a car went down the road on Sunday morning, there's either coming to church or there's real bad lost. Okay? It wasn't none of these drive-throughs. <laughs> but what I figured out, I had to get out there and work. I mean, I had, I had to labor. You had to get them in the field. I've witnessed tobacco fields. I've been to corn fields. I've walked along and even helped pick green beans to talk to people about Jesus. They figured out pretty quick, I didn't mind. They couldn't get away from me. I visited one time and I went to the home and, and uh, met, met one of my deacons and, and uh, she, says, she says, well, he's at the barn, which is way over yonder, you know, where we couldn't drive there. Well, I said, okay. We walked. We went to the barn. We found him. Talk to him. I found out later, he told somebody, he says, I'll tell you what. He says, they got a pastor down there at that Long Branch Baptist Church that'll run you down. <laughs> <laughs> he told me about the first preacher I've ever seen. They all come all the way to the barn to talk to me. <laughs> you got to go out. You got to go out. They won't come to you. You got to go out. Then what happened? They received the results. 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the and the teachings of the apostles. They, they, they had all things common. They, they were in one accord. And, and they were found favor with the people. Now what does that mean, found favor? You know, sometimes we, we might misread that a little bit in the scripture. Somebody might say, well, everybody liked them. No, that ain't what that's saying. It's a powerful message. But what the Bible is saying is this. They had the people's respect. They saw something different, Amen. something unique. When's the last time you could travel through Madison County and talk to people that don't know the Lord and say, have you seen anything unique about the believers in Madison County? Yeah. To see what they told you. Different. I tell you what, favor of the people to be this. They'd say, well, you know what they believe. 
I don't agree with it, but I know what they believe. You know, a lot of our social issues today, you know, we're being pushed. I didn't realize I'd ever face this in my life, but we are. From every corner on, on all the social issues we have and the things going on in our country that want us to accept it when it's biblically reprehensible, okay? And God needs to save their souls. Uh, you know, they may not like me, but, but I've had them tell me they respect my stand on some of the social issues that, yeah. that we got going on. That's fine in favor of the people, okay? They might, they, might, they might want to hang around you long or not like you or disagree, but at least they'll respect that you don't waver in what you stand on. When you stand on the Word of God, you'll never waver. You stand on the Word of God, you'll never waver. And this is the thing I, I said, what would we do as at Laurel Branch? I got a good chuckle out of it, and I said, what? At Gables Creek. What? <laughs> if God moved and Gary, you all got now, I mean, the power of God moved and, and the Holy Spirit came down here at Gables Creek and, and He lit you up on both ends and busted you out them doors out there and you preached as 3,000 souls saved. What would be the next thing that people would think about? What in the world are we going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> Look, 3,000 souls. Where in the world are we going to put them? <laughs> you see, you've done got me out. You're already defeated. <laughs> you know, when you think through this and you're praying, and I told, I told the folks at Laurel Branch, I said, you know, when you're praying, you're praying, God move, God move. But in the back of your mind, well, God, if you move as big as you did, well, we can't do nothing. We don't know what to do with them. And God says, you don't trust me enough to move. <laughs> You don't trust me enough where I can move. So the bottom line is this. We pray for 8,000. Now, I tell you what. If we get 8,000 souls saved in Madison County, if, if we've got 25 churches of a 10-mile diameter, we've got plenty of places to put them, all right? So I ain't worried about that. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. There'll be somewhere where God can put them. And so when we pray, the point of trust in the Lord is, God, I want you to bless. I want you to move. I want you to, I want you to reach those souls. The rest of that is, God, I know when you save them, you'll make a way where we can minister to them. You'll make a way where we can handle them. And God, I trust you enough to do that. We got a challenge. It's out there. Amen. I desire your prayers. So you know, I've been at this almost two years now. I'm still trying to figure out what to do. You know, I, find, I think I learned how to use a phone tree. I finally figured that out. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, you know. I know what to do from the spiritual side. Trust God. But I need your prayers, you know, that God will open the doors for me. God will use me in a way that I can, I can reach in this county and, and work with our pastors and, and, and let them know that I love them and that I want to support them and I pray, pray for them every day. Amen. Every day I pray for our pastors and our churches and, and I'm praying that God will use them in a, in a wonderful way. And I want to see God bless every church that we got Amen. and even the ones we don't. Amen? Amen? I want God to bless. And so I desire your prayers on, on uh, that, that God will, will use me in the way I need to be used and, and pray that I'll be obedient, all right? Amen. I found out I'm getting older. The zip ain't quite there like it was when I first started. I got to tell you this. Something happened over the weekend that's not happened in a long time. My wife got sick the first of last week with a stomach virus. Well, Friday night, about 6 o'clock, old Steve started running a fever. Monday about dinner, I got out of bed. <laughs> I, I spent two days in the bed, all right? I'd lay there and say, you know, I need to get up. And I'd sit up, well, no, I don't either. I just lay back right down. <laughs> I, I, it's the sickest I've been in a while with, with a virus. Because yeah. I knew that. I didn't go to the doctor. I knew what they'd tell me. 
Now I figure out why I pay them $75 when they're going to tell me it's a virus, and I can do that for free, okay? But, but, <laughs> but you know what, Gary? I, I was laying there. It had been, I was in the hospital the last time I missed a Sunday on church. And that, that, was, uh, that was 10 years ago. No, 12 years ago. And I was there going, you know, it's been 12 years since I missed a Sunday. Now, it ain't, it ain't like I'm trying to keep record, oh, yeah. but, but I missed it. Sure. You know? But even sick, I still missed it. Yeah. So y'all pray for me, okay? I need your prayers. Amen. Thank you for your support. My, all my work is dependent on the support of our churches and the association. You're it. Without you, I ain't here. So I appreciate your support. God bless you. Amen. If God gives Gables Creek 500 souls, I guarantee you, God knows what to do with them. Amen. <laughs> if he's a big enough God to save them, he's a big enough God to let us do something with them. Amen. Amen. Appreciate the message tonight. Amen. Go out and go out. Uh, we're, we're missionaries. This is our Jerusalem. Right around us is our Jerusalem. Judea is outside and all the world. Samaria and all the world is around us. But this is our Jerusalem. He's exactly right. Right here in Madison County is our Jerusalem, our, our place that we, that we witness to. And pray God it help us. Anyone else got anything tonight before we dismiss? You join me here, say amen. amen. Now, if you have any complaints about the message, let's see. Brother Frank, you're, he's taking complaints again tonight. So. <laughs> no, I think it's Brother John's turn. I think Brother John, he was, he was looking. <laughs> oh, my. Amen. Appreciate you coming tonight. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Again, we certainly do appreciate you being here tonight. Pray for the coming Lord's Day service. We pray the power of God would move upon us and, and help us as he has been. And the Lord will just do a work. He's been, we've had a few lost people here as of late, and you pray God continue to deal with their hearts. Anyone else? All right. You're standing. You're dismissed. Come back Sunday morning. Good night, and God bless you.